sacred space with me today. Because if you weren't here, I would be talking to myself, and then people would think I was crazy. Well, you might still think I'm crazy, and then you would be quite right. So, um, <laughs> my name is Alex, Brother Blackfeather, and um, I've, been, uh, I've been studying yoga, theory, and practice, uh, as well as you know, um, Native American shamanic traditions, Vedic traditions, and a number of different things. So this isn't, I'm not trying to be preachy for any uh, particular culture or way. This is a, a unifying experience, and I'm gonna talk about uh, how sounding, like homing sacred sound vibrations have been used in every religious culture throughout history. So it's a common thread of humanity, of, of how we connect with each other, and with the earth, with the universe, with God, if you think of that in a, a personal sense or just in the harmonic frequency sense, um, it's, it's, all, it's all good. <laughs> so um, I'm going to cover oming, chakra balancing, an Andean uh, Quechua, like a South American sort of sounding practice, and, um, and then we're going to do some mantras. So these are techniques of balancing, healing, and raising our, our vibrations through sacred sound. So, um, come some of the different cultures throughout history. In the Vedic practices, there's, uh, in the Vedanta scriptures, there's a saying, uh, this is Sanskrit, Anu Vritti Shabda. That means one is set free through sound. And we're free from the mind, from the, the waves of constant thoughts and disturbances, the, uh, the mental chatter and desires and things that are in our minds. So the word mantra means uh, man meaning mind and tra meaning an instrument or to rescue. So we're kind of tuning our body as a divine instrument to get in touch with our, our higher self and to get united with the universe. That's the meaning of yoga, is uh, connection, um, we're uniting. So we're uniting our mind, our body, our spirit, um, as well as you know, uniting with the greater universe, the earth, and very importantly, each other. So we're, we're joining our voices together in harmony, and that's a very important thing for, for humanity. So, um, as well as uh, from the Indian culture, there's also like in uh, the Christian Bible, David said, "The rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised." In Islam, Muhammad said, "Glorify the name of your Lord, the Most High." Buddha said, "All who sincerely call upon my name will come to me after death, and I will bring them to paradise." Uh, in the Vaishnavic tradition. The, uh, the Hare Krishna tradition, they, they uh, recommend chanting and singing the holy names uh, as, a, as the ultimate way to, uh, to unite with, with the spirit. So we're all kind of aware already of the effects that sound have on us. If you listen to music, you know, like minor music kind of has that sad feeling, happier music, major music has, has the uh, ha happier feel. And so these sounds, they bring us in touch with this like this calming this sense of inner peace. And uh, but there's also you know sounds for, for raising your vibrations. And this chakra balancing meditation will go through all these different aspects of yourself. But I can go on and on with theory and the philosophy. I'm also going to talk a little about uh, scientific evidence, medical evidence for um, the effects of chanting on the body or just sounding in general. But I'd like to uh, compare it uh, to Steve Ross, one of my favorite yogis. He uh, uses the analogy of uh, a mango. So you can, you can read a description of what a mango tastes like. You can uh, read about the scientific benefits of eating mango, but it really doesn't compare to the actual experience of biting into and tasting fresh mango. So this is an experiential practice, and we're going to experience this together. Um, if anybody is interested in, in some of the uh, scientific benefits. Basically, I, I'm, I've experienced this myself, um, and it's helped me a lot in my life. I practice a lot of these, these chants and things daily, and I've experienced many, many benefits in my life, uh, you know, calming from stress, raising my energy, healing. 
so I think that's why I'm sharing this here. This is the helps that help some people. But uh, calms the central nervous system. It increases uh, 15 times more nitric oxide, which is um, a gas that's essential for immune system, nervous system, cardiovascular system. Not to be confused with nitrous oxide. That's that's a different thing also. But um, in 1998, uh, nitric oxide actually received a, a Nobel Prize for its uh, effects on fighting infection and high blood pressure. So like nowadays, we have pharmaceuticals like nitro nitroglycerin people take to uh, calm their, their blood pressure. But yogis 5,000 years ago were practicing these chanting techniques, so increasing their nitric oxide through the technology of their body, you know, without any kind of artificial chemicals or anything. So, you know, there's a lot of sound healing practices with, with a lot of different types of instruments. They're all amazing and helpful. But this is using the instrument of your voice that connects with your body, your mind, and your spirit. Um, <laughs> it increases uh, beta endorphins, which are natural painkillers, lowers heart rate, go on and on, but I think I'd rather just get us homing. <laughs> <laughs>